Welcome back from the break. We are still having a conversation about external parasites and how you can control them in your farm with Dr. Edward Karaoke. Now, Dr. Tari, when it comes to lice, you mentioned lice yeah. as parts or rather types of mm, external, external parasites. parasites yeah. Most people know of ile chawa ya kichwa, alafu ile chawa unapata kwa beddings. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Which type of lice are yeah. specific to pigs and okay. how does a farmer identify them? There are two types of lice. They are what we call the biting lice and the sucking lice. The farmer might not be able to identify both because lice are very tiny. By just looking at them, you can't say these are biting, these are, are, are sucking lice, but you'll be able to see them generally walking on the, on the surface of the, on, of the skin. But if you, have, if you have mites, then they are, you should get concerned you might not be able to differentiate the, the two kind of, of, of mites, but you should always be concerned because they, they will cause problems to your pigs. They either bite and cause uh, itching, or they suck blood, which will come with a, a, a cascade of problems. Anemia, that means uh, the pig will have low amount of blood, and uh, it can also transmit other diseases by biting and sucking blood. What are some of the prevention strategies that a farmer can use to ensure that they don't have lice? As I have kept saying, lice and other external parasites are in the environment and uh, the pigs will get them from the environment, from their immediate environment. So number one is to control their population in the pen uh, the, the best thing to control uh, is to put clean bedding. There are farmers who like giving bedding to their animals, wood shavings, and uh, if that stays in the pen for too long, there is accumulation of, of, of these parasites. So if you give bedding to your pigs, make sure that every maybe a week, or not more than two, you change that bedding and bring fresh. Also, wash the pen with water and soap frequently so that this kills uh, some of the, of the parasites and washes away maybe some of them and even their, their eggs. I've also read that stable flies are quite a menace when it comes to pigs. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can touch a bit more on that. We tend to overlook flies probably because we only know the house flies and they don't bite and uh, we think that it's not a problem even to pigs. One thing is that uh, pig stables will always have, have flies and their waste will always attract flies, different kind of flies. And uh, some of the flies that come in are flies that can bite. They are flies that can cause a condition we call as myiasis, which I will explain uh, as we go. They are flies that can bring contamination, can bring diseases, so we should not overlook them. We should always seek to control them and uh, make sure that they don't bring a menace. When it comes, you've mentioned that in any pig store you find that there are flies. Yeah. There's some pig farms you go to and you find that there are absolutely no flies mm -hmm. at all at all. Uh, I think those are those are farms that have known that flies can be a menace and they have taken the action to to control them. One thing is to keep the stables clean. Clean them as usually and dispose the waste far from the stables. If you dispose the waste just next to the stables, the flies will, will persist because they are just around it. They will come to the stables. So clean the stables with water often, then dispose the waste far away from, from, from the stables, or at least a distance away from the stables. This will kill the, the, the flies away. It will make sure they, they don't come from the waste and to the pig stables. So this means also they also affect the meat quality as well? Not really. Mm -hmm. This could be a problem with meat quality if slaughtering is being done within the farm. And that is not very common in our farms or in our setup. The, the butcheries are far away from, from, from the pig farms. So I don't think 
it's a problem with meat quality. Mm -hmm. It's only a problem with production, so that if, it's, it, if it comes a menace with, with ticks, they are not comfortable, they don't rest well, then the growth rate is slowed down. And that means the farmer does not get production at the rate that is supposed to be. And that translates to losses. What about ringworms? Mm -hmm. Yeah, ringworms, they, they can be a problem if not well checked. Because ringworms are fungal, uh, are fungal infestations. They occur almost the same as, as mites. The lesions are very close to, to appearing similar, but you differentiate mites from, from ringworms in that ringworms are not itchy. They will have uh, round lesions that continue to grow bigger, bigger, but they are not itchy. This, this compromises also even the, the production because as it grows, it uses part of the energy and of the blood from the, the pig. So it's a problem, yes, and uh, it slows down growth rate and it compromises immunity and uh, you are likely to find pigs that were, that were earlier very healthy, they come down with other diseases very, very, very quickly and very easily. You've mentioned about the round lesions. Yeah. So is that the only symptom and sign that my pig has? Yeah. Ringworms? Yeah, that is the only sign that a farmer will, will recognize from a pig that has, that has ringworms, no, no, not any other. The only other which is not very specific to ringworms is that they will not grow as fast. They will not be put in weight as fast. So that is that could be the ringworms or it could be other other reasons as, as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not specific to ringworms. Okay. And how do you treat ringworms? Ringworms uh, there are, there are medi medications that you treat, that you wash the, the lesions on, because those are the fungus that are growing. So there are, there are, there are several uh, medications that are available. Uh, the, the copper sulfate is available, iodine is available, and you just wash the lesions thoroughly, and uh, you keep washing until they completely go off. What yes. are some of the methods that you can use to boost immunity when it comes to your pigs? As you have said, uh, a pig with good immunity, you won't encounter ringworms at all, at all. And uh, something to note also, ringworms, you will find them in, in winner pigs, in young piglets that have just been weaned. And one thing that compromises the immunity is stress. And one factor that comes with stress is winning piglets and that is where you will find uh, ringworms some some of the time or most of the time and the way to manage stress is uh, winning them gradually introducing feed gradually even before weaning and uh, not mixing uh, piglets from different mothers immediately just after weaning this one minimizes stress and if they are their stress levels are low then their immunity is but high. But what about, you find that there's some, uh, there's some breeds which, some pig breeds which are not essentially very good mothers. Mm -hmm. So you find that a pig farmer has to take piglets from a certain mother mm -hmm. and put to them another. to another mother. Yeah. What about instances like those ones? Instances like those ones, it depends on how the other mother is going to receive these other ones. If the other mother is a good mother and she, and she receives the other piglets well, you won't find a problem with that. The only big problem is during winning. When you win, the, the, the piglets have a complete change of diet. They are used to mother's milk, no mama's milk now, so that is also a part of stress. They were used to sleeping near the mom. They are, only, they are alone now, so that's a form of stress. And uh, that, could, th that very often leads to compromised immunity and ringworms. Ah, and okay. not only ringworms, even other, other diseases. Uh -huh. Let's move on to ticks. Yeah. You find that ticks can easily transmit a disease yeah. from one animal to another, especially yeah. when you go to farms which have pigs, they have sheep, they have goats. Mm -hmm. uh, can, maybe you can elaborate for us, especially when it comes to pigs. Yeah. 
uh, and I want to mention that ticks are not very common for pigs that are, are confined, are confined to their pens. Pigs be, uh, ticks can only be a problem if the, the, the pigs are, allow, are allowed to roam outside the, the stable so that they will go and uh, interact with the goats, with dogs, and also walking outside they might pick uh, ticks even from the ground. That is the only time that we are going to find ticks. Uh, they can be a problem because they, they, they suck blood, they cause irritation, they transmit diseases, and uh, one of the worst diseases that uh, a pig might get from, from tick is a very bad disease we call African swine fever. And uh, it, it, the ticks that, that spread that usually uh, are from war dogs. And if we let our pigs stray out, they might bump into ticks that have been, that have been with wild pigs. And that is a bad chance for, for getting African swine fever. And just to mention, African swine fever is a catastrophic disease that we don't want to get in our uh, pig farms at all. So the only thing I would, I would encourage, let's confine our pigs. It removes many other problems other than just ticks. Exactly. Yeah. Especially because we've seen um like for instance in Vietnam, mm -hmm. we've had a lot of cases of African swine flu. Does it mean that ticks spread the disease? Yeah, potentially they can, not all ticks. Ticks that have bitten uh, an infected wild, wild pig can bring the, the disease to our domestic pigs. So we should not collect our pigs long. And what is the appropriate regime uh, for external parasites, to control external parasites? If you are a farmer who is doing pig farming, you need to check like on a daily basis. Check on a daily basis to see whether you see any external parasites, whether you see any roughness of the skin, so that that gives you an idea whether you have it presently. But um, for generally for mites, if you encounter the problem, if you have the problem, you need to do a, a, a two weekly spray on in the pen and uh, at least for the for, to start with two weeks interval call a vet to come and do an injection to 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 kill the mites for other general uh, external parasites mites fleas ticks at least there if if you are if your pigs are confined it might not be very common but it, you, you, you should you should at least make a monthly check and spray if there are if there are any parasites at least a month thank you so much dr Ayu, for coming on the show and sharing your nuggets of wisdom with us you are welcome yes we'll be definitely calling you back again and I'll be happy to come and share more. Okay, so, so. We hope you have learned a lot when it comes to external parasites and how you can control them in your pig farm. Hmm? The biggest takeaway for me was ensuring the highest hygiene standards when it comes to your pig farm. As always, you can interact with us on our social media pages at Farm Kenya and SMS us on the number below your screen. As always, I am your host, Esther Gishuki. Until next time, goodbye.